Hello and welcome back to the Brits Top Table with Mastercard. The podcast where the superstars of the music and showbiz world sit down at our table to share stories and pretend to laugh at our jokes. My name is Munya. And I'm Sideman and you're spot on apart from the pretending to laugh. I make them laugh for real. <laughs> put respect on my bottom lip. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say put respect on my bottom. I was like, mate, I've been doing that. <laughs> okay, so... um. We haven't mentioned this yet, and I don't even know why, but uh, as a little icebreaker, Sideman, you've been living in a mansion for the last few weeks. I have not been, even spoke about that yet. I have been, um, but temporarily, so don't get excited. Don't use that to equate to my bank account. I can't pay your rent. I can only pay mine. <laughs> this isn't an ad for a sugar daddy. I'm just asking <laughs> about your living situation. But we were having a chat, and uh, we were saying, you've been having a bit of bathroom beef. Yes. And I, I used to have bathroom beef. So what's the situation? So obviously, um, I'm living in a mansion with my friends, right? Um, it's a mansion that I procured uh, via via my contacts. Um, and one of my friends, he's in an apartment part of it that's kind of closed off. Mm -hmm. And he said that he doesn't want anybody to use his bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I've had to, you know, educate that gentleman and let him know he doesn't have no bathroom here <laughs> because you don't pay rent, utilities or nothing. Mm -hmm. you, you have nothing to do with this other than that you happen to know me. Uh, so nah, But I you know what? I get what he's doing because how many is in, how many is in the mansion? Uh, currently eight. Okay, so I used to live with nine guys at university and there were three bathrooms. Now, best believe within the first two weeks, two of those bathrooms, no way. They were like purgatory. <laughs> so what I used to have to do is if anyone, if I heard anyone go down to the bottom bathroom, I would run downstairs quietly and, and flicker the lights. Horror okay. movie style. Stop anyone using it. And let me tell you, that bathroom, you know the, the videos you see on Instagram of Santorini? Yeah. My bathroom was Santorini. Wow. So I see what your friend's doing and I think bathroom is a sacred place. It is. So I let the man have his sacred place. It's where I read the the back parts of shampoo bottles and find out what the ingredients yeah. are. Like it's a, it's a it's a very sacred and mm. you know almost romantic journey. Yeah. And speaking of comfortable places and sacred places, uh, I feel like we've created one now for our guests yes. to just yes. waltz into. Yes. So what won't they talk about now that we've talked about our toilet? Um, <laughs> hey, journey? I had no part in that. Okay. <laughs> well, you do the honors, mate. Okay, we've got amazing guests with us today. Um, and joining myself and Munya are the collab team of dreams mm -hmm. who have been nominated in the British single with MasterCard category at this year's Brit Awards. Uh, and both my head and my heart <laughs> says you're going <laughs> to love these guys. It's Joel Curry and M and E K. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Our second guest is a one extra DJ who's interviewed some of the greatest names of all time, Rick Ross, Digger D and Hedy One. She calls herself Snoochie Shy, but I'd argue she's very much Snoochie Confident, am I right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Snoochie Shy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoochie <laughs> Confident inside the place, you know the vibes, we're here. <laughs> so, this is the first podcast we've done where all three of you are nominated for something. Yes. Because Snoochie is an ARIA-nominated radio host now. Ooh. We've got uh, Joel who's up for three and Monique is up for one. So, you know, these are all big awards to be up to. But what is the most mundane award you have ever won in your life? I'm talking back in primary school days where it was like <laughs> best length of tie. Has there ever been an award before this which was like, actually, no, that was pretty sick, even though it's not as good as this? Um, do you know what? I swam a mile when I was at school. Like that was big, bruv. A mile is actually quite That's far. That's really impressive. Why, I, I can't swim. Really? To save my life, literally. I didn't know that. Why did you Why did you do that, Joel? It was a thing at primary school, bruv. I was the first one to do it as well, man. So that's, the, that's when I was thinking back to like, that was a big award, bruv, to swim the first mile at school, you know. Was it in the swimming pool or did they just toss kids into the ocean? Yeah, just on laps, bruv. Like, <laughs> oh, right, laps. fine. <laughs> laps and laps. Jump in the Thames. Go on, swim the English channel. <laughs> um, I think mine was like, Mine might have been just a spelling bee. I think my, mm. I must have just like spelt a word really well and I don't know what, but I remember in school it would have, every Friday it would be like awards, like everyone would get an award for something mm. and you'd be sitting up in your chair knowing you were about to win this award. You're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got this. I know I'm going to win it. And they call out some other kid named Michael's name and it's like, <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just the, the oop and the goop of it. <laughs> No, but spelling is really important, man. When you're writing songs for Beyonce, you can't be sending over any old typos. Do you know what I mean? Well, 
this isn't about me. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't about me. <laughs> I'm going to ask a question now, m &E because just underwriting and spelling, I always wonder what songs look like written down. Mm. Okay, let's say you guys sung. With the burp, burp, with, with that part, did you actually <laughs> write burp, 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 burp? Do you actually write that down? That is big, big question. And how do you spell that? I think it's just B-A-B-A-D-U-M. <laughs> but badam, badam, yeah. badam, badam. It's actually funny, right? Because because I had to write all the lyrics out to like, you know, when you submit for like the lyric music video and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I, honestly, bro, the amount of times I wrote that out and deleted it, was like, no, nah, that's... I was like writing bum, bum, bum. And then like, bam, <laughs> Too bam, many bum. I was like, I was like, I don't even know what I'm writing here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, I was ringing my mate going like, bro, what would you write it as? <laughs> and then in, in the lyric music video, they just actually didn't end up writing and they just put like some like animation instead. Sure, because <laughs> it doesn't even matter. <laughs> but according to YouTube, the lyrics are bum bum bam, bum bam bam, bum bum bam bum. Just for anyone who needed that clarification. <laughs> But do you know what? Yeah, bruv, this is the funny thing, right? Like the song blew up in Holland, yeah? Like in, and over there, the way they said it was Pam, Pam, Pam. So all these people <laughs> messaged me with like, with a P, like Pam, 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 Pam. And that's obviously like how they hear it over there, innit? So I think it depends what, what like country you live in. It's, mm. it's a different spelling. Yeah. Pam, Pam, Pam was also the sound of me calling my mum at age four over anything. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. Oh right, uh, Snoochie, what about your mundane award? An award for me, it's actually framed in my mum's house. It was mm -hmm. me doing uh, an exam in French and I got a grade G. Uh, <laughs> didn't know that, <laughs> I didn't even know that Gs existed, but I do take it now as at the fact that they just knew I was a G from like time. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, so yeah, now that's, that's good. Why I'm here for that. What would a G stood for? I don't know what a G stands for. I don't know what a G stands for. It can't stand for anything good. There was an F and I did not know that a G existed, but it's literally framed <laughs> in my mom's house. But that was like, it wasn't like a GCSE actually. It was like a year nine. I think it was like SATs or something like that. Back in those Gosh. days, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I always thought F went straight to U. I don't know, yeah, I've yeah, got a G, yeah. so I'm saying that my French teacher thought that I was a G. So that's, that's what I'm going with there. But it's literally in my mom's house. I'm saying that your French teacher had a vendetta against you. Like, mm. as a teacher, you don't Mr. write down G. <laughs> yes. Mr. Thompson was his name. But it was like a year nine flex. So it wasn't like proper GCSE, because in the GCSE, I did come out of a D. So. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> I saw you turned, you, turned your, you turned your problems into a blessing. Exactly. You turned your G That's into a D. <laughs> With our mundane award decide. Obviously, Joel and Emily K, you've you've uh, you've worked together. You've had to get to know each other in order to create the magic you have. Uh, but I wanted to ask something I found on the the very sort of early stages of Emily K's Twitter timeline. Joel, did you know about Emily K that um, when he first started to speak, it was actually in an Irish accent? Do you know that story? <laughs> no, I don't. I need to hear about this. <laughs> it's an incredible story, and Emily no, K, I feel like you should tell us. Well, I've been. Put into a corner, thank you, Manuel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, because I was, I was, I started speaking really late, and my speech therapist was Irish, <laughs> and wow. so like I would go to her like, and for the first few weeks of me speaking, I had like an Irish ting to my voice, but then wow. now it just comes off as like South London slash transatlantic. So this is the this is the mutt that came out of speech therapy. This is the real voice now. But I just thought it was so interesting because you can work with someone and never find out anything about them or, or never find out kind of like the, you know, the backstory behind the kind of the musician. So I was really surprised because m &E I've seen you. I bumped into you in Sainsbury's. I bumped into you in the Barbers. Yes. And you've never told me this story. So I do well, feel quite hurt by that. How do you come out with that? <laughs> how do you come up, how, how do you break into that story? Like, hey, Munya, it's been a while. You know, I couldn't speak till I was three years old and had an Irish accent for like six months. <laughs> how smooth is that? I don't know. <laughs> Joel, you've got a tattoo that M and EK might not know about, which we was watching on YouTube earlier. I didn't oh, know no, you had any bro. tattoos. Oh no. What well, do you want me to tell me this story? Oh, yes. Please. <laughs> I thought you were like, no tattoos, just like clean. Okay, cool. Oh, no, no, no. Let no. me just preface this story by telling you that, Joel, you are fearless. You are very fearless, oh, my bro. friend. And let's hope you don't wear Speedos in Ibiza. I'll just say that much. Oh, my God, where is it? <laughs> no, literally, right? So um, there was this show on MTV called Just Tattoo of Us. Have you seen it before? It's yeah, yeah. like 
basically you go on with like your girlfriend or your mate or someone from your family and you both get tattoos but you don't tell each other what you're getting each other so it's like a bit of a reveal at the end of what you've got okay. and basically my ex-girlfriend yeah um her best mate was hosting this show uh, charlotte from geordie shore and it was the first episode and they needed people so she reached out and was like will you come on this and i was like oh my god all right i'll do it but the thing is the tattoo can't be anywhere where anyone can see it mm-hmm. so obviously that oh only left gosh. like one place it could be <laughs> your groin, your groin. <laughs> <laughs> literally so yeah i've that i've got one tattoo there and it's and but obviously where? i didn't know like right next to it <laughs> three centimeters from the left bollock yeah wow. bro. yeah bro first tattoo as well and the, and the thing is bro, i didn't know what the tattoo was going to be because i only find out at the end of the program yeah and it was it she got her eye there, bro. So she'd always keep an eye on it. Oh my god, no. <laughs> I kinda of rate that though. I and rate it, the creativity. That's like, absolutely yeah. wild. It's it's her eye as well. <laughs> oh, oh okay, so so what so what that wasn't a red flag? <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah. The relationship so. would have ended there and then for me. Yes. I can't lie. Facts. Facts. I, I, there is one other question I did want to ask because we're all telling the sort of dark recesses of our stories. Um, Snoochie, I quite like the story of you having uh, an ex-boyfriend who pretended to be Portuguese for like a year. Oh, God, wow. yeah, yeah. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah, I what? was in a relationship. <laughs> I was in a relationship with this guy. Uh, this is years ago. I've been single for seven years. So if there's anyone locked in that may want to, you know. Um, Side man's here yeah. if you were. Side man is here. He could be an option. Who knows? But yeah, I was dating this guy and we had like a tight knit friendship group. And <laughs> he used to tell us that he was Portuguese, right? But he would speak in what I would, what I thought was Portuguese as well. So anytime that he was angry to me or his friends, he'd start screaming in Portuguese and stuff, right? So we were just like, look, we don't understand what you're saying, bro. And then like, <laughs> I'm a year surprised later, you didn't think it was French. <laughs> No, but to be fair, I'm all right in French now. Um, but we went to a we went to a club one night, and then we got outside the club, and he was like kicking off in Portuguese and stuff. And then this couple had come up to us and the friendship group outside the club. I've actually stole his friends now; they're now mine, um, probably because he, he was actually a walking red flag. But uh, the couple was like, "What language are you speaking?" And he was like, "Portuguese." And they was like, "No, we're Portuguese, and we don't understand a word that you're saying." And then he literally just ran off. He literally <laughs> ran off and left us, me and his boys, outside the club. And we was like, what the hell? He ran down Kingsland Road like there was no tomorrow. We was outside birthdays <laughs> at the time as well. So. Oh, birthdays. <laughs> <Yeah, I'm dead. laughs> when birthdays were still about, do you know what I'm saying? So I'm them dead. days. He bruised it. Do you, do you know what though, bruv? I've got to confess, yeah? I'm not going to lie, bruv. Oh, I've, 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 I've got... <laughs> Go on, John. I've got, I'm going to confess, right? <laughs> I'm shook. Uh-oh. I've got a little bit of Italian in my family yet, but mm. bro, I wear that <laughs> pop on my sleeve. I'm like, yeah, I'm Italian, bro, isn't it? Like, just, just to add like a bit more spi- nice. spice in there, bro, isn't it? But there's a there's a little sliver, bro. But I probably blow it up, like, yeah, family's Italian, like, like dad speaks full Italian. Do you know what I mean, bro? A little bit of seasoning, <laughs> just, just a salt based <laughs> sprinkle of culture. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I think this guy was just trying to impress you. You know, like I kind of understand where he's coming from. I mean, we. He was in a relationship for a year, so, but he did want to get. <laughs> but he did want to get into acting, so maybe that was like an audition for his acting. I don't know, but don't know what happened. He's disappeared now. I've never seen him again. So wow, he's not even oh. on social media anymore. Like it's quite weird. He's somebody else now. That is nuts. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, we're, oh we're gonna we're gonna get into a game. Mm. All right, so uh. This game um, is based on um, our lovely m and um, I love the fact that you have kind of like abbreviated your name so that people can be able to say it uh, for the simpletons like myself and out there. And they still struggle. And they still struggle. <laughs> uh, so so um, this game is called Acknowledge the Acronym. Oh so God. based on your name, which is, of course, an abbreviation of sort, I want to find out how many acronyms that the kids are using these days you guys are actually aware of. Uh, are you ready? We're going to start off easy. So whoever gets it, just say it first. Uh, AMA. I don't know. American Music Awards. <laughs> no. I started off easy as well. And why are you shouting out other awards on our Brits? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> We're trying to get our second... <laughs> We're trying to get a second season here. Is it a, a mile away? No. A minute away? This is one of the easiest ones. So imagine you go on Insta Live. Insta Story. And you're like, hey, yeah, Insta Story. Hey, guys, I've got some free time. So AMA. 
AMA. I'm Googling this quickly, Bob. He literally hey, just Joel, handed no it over. Googling. He literally <laughs> said, no. He's using Italian Google. I, I, want you, I want you guys to think about what Munya just said. You go, you, have you ever seen somebody on their Insta stories that's bored and says, okay, guys, I've got some free time, so... Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Yes. Oh, yes. Well done. <laughs> okay, how about this? E-L-I... Five. No chance they're getting this. E L I five. We're doing letters and numbers in one. Oh my god, yeah. algebra. Um, so okay, we need context. Imagine this. E L I five. Sideman's explaining something to me, and I'm like, bro, 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 I don't get this. But I'm using e all of my vocabulary big, and my vernacular. Big words. Yeah. And I'm like, mate, just E L I E E L E L I five. E L I five. Like E L I five. Look, Munya. Munya, you need to stop playing. We're too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, no, we, like, we don't know what any of these kids are saying. <laughs> All right, let's just tell them. Explain like I'm five. Yeah. That's what ELI five oh, Wait, what? That. Yes. Which we just had to do. Why would ELI five? Yes, yes, <laughs> literally. We just explained it like they were fetuses. But anyway, okay. I the can't next... even, that's actually hard to even say. ELI five. Who says that? That one is not an no, abbreviation at all. I don't know if I believe all. this. I'm, abs I'm sorry, I don't believe this, man. No, it, not all of research? these are real. Wait, I got one for Snoochie. This was, um, how about this? H M B I S P. Wow. Of course, the one with the most letters in it is going to be the one for Snoochie. What? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? H M B. It sounds like H M B I S P. I thought you said H M P. H M B. I'm going to write this down on my phone because I can't even. Anyone who gets this, I give you ten pounds. I genuinely thought you were saying H M B I S P. Hit me back. Okay, you only got five seconds. Four, three. So, Hit me back uh, in slope. This is used by quite a lot of people. It's uh, how my boyfriend is speaking Portuguese. What? Did you did you <laughs> never did you never did you never say that? Then that is what I will be using in the future. Just thinking of the insect and the ex-boyfriend. Do you know what I mean? Monia, you are hilarious. All right, I guess it's time for our next game. It is. It's TTPK. Time to play kazoos. <laughs> okay, so this is guess kazoo now. What we have is two teams, myself and Sideman, Emily K and Joel, and Snoochie, our in-house radio DJ, is going to play a series of tunes which we must guess first to score a point. So, Snoochie, when you're ready, tune number one. <laughs> all right, well, all the pressure here, so, you know, don't watch my blowing technique. <clears throat> <laughs> so, right, um, oh, my God. Wait, am I doing it the right way? So why can't I... <laughs> no, make man. it vibrate. It's you have to make some it. Sort of fault with this. There, there you go. go. There you go. Okay, so song number one. Here we go. <laughs> is it Cardi B up? <laughs> no. 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 It is okay. not Cardi B up. I thought this was actually really, really good. I was going to say Blazing Squad Flip Reverse It. <laughs> Blazing Squad Flip Reverse It is actually a banger. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie. For this one, I haven't actually gone... For this one, I haven't actually gone mainstream, but he has been nominated for a Brit Award before in the Wait. past. Okay. Um, give us he a clue. A, uh, the, the clue is he is a rapper um, <laughs> and you lot know where I'm from. <laughs> South <laughs> London. Oh, yeah. Talking the hardest. Yes, oh, thank what? you. Oh, 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 my God. Yeah, that Listen, was sick. That was sick. I didn't actually get it from the um the tone. I just know how much Snoochie loves, loves gigs. Talk God, gigs and talking the, talking the hardest. Yeah, talking the hardest. Gigs better come up in your thoughts. Jeez. Jeez. You know <laughs> okay, round two. It's really hard to um okay, I need to think of another song now. Jesus Christ. Um uh, all right. Give us melody. Yes. <laughs> oh, how did I do it again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know this, I know this. Mm -hmm. Just do him with me if you wanted to. Oh, these are red bottoms. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 All right. Okay, here the decider. Go. All right, I need to. I need to like think here because there's a lot of pressure now. So, okay. Um... Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I can't get the technique back again. <laughs> now you lot need to get these because this is actually hard. I'm sorry. Has anyone uh... else struggled with this before? Is it just me? 
Okay, <laughs> I'll do this for Joel and Emily K, but Sideman, you count from five. If you don't get it in five seconds, then you lose. Okay. Here we go. Justin Bieber, Peaches. I can't do this properly. Snoochie, you gave it a really good effort, and that is what I an Aria nominated presenter would do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Guess Kazoo. <laughs> Woo! So, uh, back to the music. Now, Joel, I mean, you're on a blinder at the moment, mate. Male solo artist, breakthrough artist, re recently Global's Rising Star Award. You seem to be sort of taking it all in your stride, but I mean, how gassed do you get each time a nomination comes through? Because it's a big deal, man. Yeah, it's mad, honestly, bruv. Like, um, if you'd asked me a few years ago, I was going to get like a, a Brit Award nomination, I'd be like, you're mad, didn't it? So to get mm. free is crazy. And yeah, it just doesn't, hasn't really sunk in yet, I don't think until I probably until I actually get there but it's it's mm. a madness mate honestly I can't believe it is there any level of importance that like having such prestigious nominations makes you feel in the sense that can your friend still call you and ask you to help him move his house or is it just like <laughs> bro like let's be adults here like you see what I'm on like <laughs> <laughs> I need to use that bro that's like, actually give me an idea bro I need to start I need to start using this to my advantage now isn't it I love that you see where adults know you see yeah. what I'm on <laughs> there's certain things where if my friends call me for that now he's like bro you 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 see it don't you 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 were there yeah. right you saw it <laughs> <laughs> or is it still just feels That's... like the same for you and your day to day? No, nah, but you know what though? I might have to change my mindset now to what you're saying, but no, 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 seriously, no, no, exactly. The, nothing changed, bruv. Of course not, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm absolutely buzzing with the nominations, but still, it would never change me, bruv, ever. Awesome. <laughs> for Emily K as well, I mean, you've, even since the age of 14, I think it was yeah, when man. you signed a publishing deal. It's crazy. Like you've written for some of the biggest in the world, maybe even all. In fact, it's like very much Thanos and the Infinity Stones at this point. Like yes. each one is a, is a step up. <laughs> Does anything phase you anymore? Because obviously that's that's been your life for so long. When was the last time you thought to yourself, wow, I'm actually really, uh, I'm really happy about this and I'm really sort of mind blown by this achievement? I think it was probably like this song, you mm. know? I think that, you know, when Joel, Joel and his team had sent me this song, I was so excited about it and so excited to put it out and all of the buzz of it doing well, especially during this time, was so exciting and really brought to the forefront my purpose. You know, it's gonna, like, be, it's gonna be different as well, isn't it? Cause it's you. I mean, I've had success with me singing on it before, you know, and it's, it's amazing to have a number one and to share it with Joel and for us to like be experiencing this together. Now, I think it's just about like, I can really appreciate the good things that happen. I would think when I was younger, cause I've been doing it from so young at the time, I would just be like, mm, this happened, mm, that happened. But now it can be like, Oh, you know, walking wardrobe and songs on the radio and Brits mm. nomination and like all this fun stuff. I hear that. And um, I actually think the older you get, the more you actually are able to appreciate things. hundred percent. You get so much Definitely. more of a view of the whole world. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So it's like you go, like, you know what? I'm really blessed. Cause even when you when you experience these things at the time that we're experiencing them, when a lot of people have been going through a pandemic and you might have friends where their business is collapsed or mm. things didn't work out for them. And it's just like when you experience those kinds of blessings in these times, it feels even more amazing because it's like, oh my God, I'm being I'm blessed. Mm. And like we're gonna look back in like five years from now and just be like, raw, like we really we we did we had to do you during did that. that time, you know. Yeah, yeah we mm -hmm. survived that. Yeah, <laughs> we made it through. Snoochie, like we mentioned at the start of the show, you're also up for a, a massive radio award, an aria, I think it's it's pronounced. Yes, an aria. You've been in radio for a long time. You know, you've put in a hard shift. You've yeah. done loads of interviews, and now this feels very fitting. I was wondering because. When I watch clips of you from your radio show, you're very confident when you're speaking to guests. It doesn't seem like you ever get phased. We were talking about people like, you know, Rick Ross, American artists, you know, some of the biggest names here. Do you think there's anyone that you've yet to interview who would really phase you? Um, I think Jim Carrey, if I'm honest. Like, is he, I really, is he really... your, your guy? Yeah, like I watched him do an interview before and it was at an award ceremony and I was just like, oh, I wish I was that host interviewing him because he was just speaking and I felt like he wasn't really understanding what he was saying. But I just mm. wanted to do that interview. So definitely Jim Carrey and also GCJ for me. I love GCJ, 360, that for years. So it would honestly be Jim Carrey <laughs> and GCJ for me if I could interview anyone. 
What I love about your nomination, Snoochie, is that I've been on your show. I've listened to your show so many times. You're so you. Mm. Like, that must really feel like getting an award for being yourself mm. because you're so you on that show. I, I love it when somebody gets to just literally be themselves and that's all they needed to be. They never needed to add anything. There was just no preservatives. It's just you. I just really respect it. Yeah, man. Oh, thank you, sad man. You're going to get me a right now. <laughs> Everyone's up for awards, but the big question is, where has everyone planned to put them? Because, yes. you know, you've got to visualise these kind of things. So where's everyone going to put their Brit slash Aria when it happens? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked about this before, didn't we? I think, I think t toilet's a good place for an award, bruv. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it does not sound good when you say it out loud. Plus, people are doing <laughs> <laughs> Bedside table is good as That's well. That's when they've got the most time to reflect on your greatness. Just to know how you're doing while you're taking this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my yeah. God. Okay, so the toilet, <laughs> fine. Uh, Emily, where are you going to put your award? Amongst my other awards, obviously, in my award cabinet. That's specifically for just that. <laughs> Retweet. <laughs> <laughs> Snoochie? I'll probably just put mine next to my uh, induction cooker uh, just because it doesn't <laughs> get right. used that much. So <laughs> I feel like we can put it over there. So yeah, next to my induction cooker, I think, because there's a lot of space there. Like I said, I don't, What's an I don't prepare cooker? food. Oh, it's just a, it's just a cooker that's used with electric. Heat. No, no, it's not just it? It, it's it's the snob of it's the snob of Hobbs because basically they've designed it so that no other pot works on it apart from specific pots. Oh, oh. it's very elitist, Joel. Don't get into that world. My mum bought me like a set of pots and I couldn't even use them. I had to give them back to her. I'm so upset. But yeah, because I don't cook that much, I know it's not going to melt or anything like that. So I'd I'd put it there. But that's if I win it anyway. But this all leads perfectly into our next game because mm -hmm. oftentimes when I hear. Snoochie's anecdotes and I hear her speak on things I often ask myself Snoochie why and that's the name of our next game uh, Snoochie why okay so this game is gonna go through just a couple of your tweets I'll do one you do you one might. and I'll do the other one yes your tweets uh, oh, and the question is just <laughs> the question is Snoochie why uh, you don't tweet that much but when you do one is left befuddled and confused yes so um, <laughs> two days ago you tweeted uh, keep wine away from me forever I am not on it anymore. I've left that life behind. <laughs> Cocktails or nothing now. Yeah. Snoochie, why? This is the day before I actually saw Munya. I decided to go out and drink a <laughs> bottle of wine with Yasmin. That's just an emotional preparation <laughs> needed before. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> and I turn up to Munya's shoot now, and I'm not going to lie, I was hanging out of my ass, mate. And then Munya's <laughs> made me do a lemon shot. And as soon as Munya was like, OK, we're going to do this lemon shot, in my head, I was like, I'm going to vomit over Munya's face. Like, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, I'm, all I can focus on right now is just not vomiting. Um, mm. So, yeah, that's why I'm never going to go near wine again. I'm going to stick to, like, the Negronis and the cocktails and the porn star martinis and the pina You guys lagers. agree? Is <laughs> wine dangerous? Oh, uh, man, like, the next I'm day not, is I'm terrible. not a big wine drinker. Yeah, Joe, what are you? Because you, obviously you're going to be doing a mad circuit in summer, all the clubs, all the festivals. What's the, what's the rider? Do you know what? Like, if it, I've always got vodka on my rider, but you know, you know, abroad, bruv, in the islands, if you're not specific about what vodka is on the rider, <laughs> you get the floor bruv, cleaner. You, you get the Rushnikov, bruv. <laughs> and uh, trust me, the Rushnikov, bruv, like, it, it does stuff to your throat. Have you ever, have you ever been in Magaluf for 10 days with the boys and you come back and you can't talk? Wow. I can't that's say the, that's the Russian cop, bro. Wow. Emily <laughs> <laughs> K, what's your go-to drink, Emily K? So I don't mind wine, and I'm like, I guess I'm a, I'm a heavy. I can't. I don't really get drunk very easily. Mm. So, and also I probably can't even you know speak too tough on anything. And let's let's say absolute. Because <laughs> wow, that was very near. Yes, very near. Yeah. Know, it's spot. very near. This has been my office for the past year. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's um, ask uh, another one of Snoochie's why tweet. Someone tweeted, do you think you could fall in love in three weeks? And you quote tweeted them saying, in 30 minutes, to be honest, bye. Uh, yeah, that's exactly Snoochie, true. why? Exactly I know true. this is true and I still ask myself, why does she do this all the time? It's absolutely true. Like, I just know within like, I just know like that if I'm going to vibe you, actually probably within a minute. I was there when you met one of your exes. Oh my God, you was. Yeah, and I was literally in love with him then and there. Snoochie immediately said, yeah, it's, yeah this is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm very much like that. I'm sorry. I don't have no time to waste. People want to be in talking stages for about three years. I'm sorry. I love you, bro. Let's get together. <laughs> like, what are you actually doing here? I'm not going to be sat here in a talking stage. What are we talking about? There's nothing to say. We, you love me. I love you. Let's get this shit popping. Wow. Life's too short. Uh, so you have decided that. <laughs> yes, yeah. you have decided then, that. He I loves just, you already. Yeah, <laughs> I decided for him and then he runs away. So it's great. It, works out it makes then. sense though, because if, if you say I love you, you love me, and he stays after that, that is an admission of guilt at that point. You exactly. have admitted that you yeah. They normally run away after a couple of months, so it's fine. Do you know what I mean? It's all good. No, quite it's a good theory actually. It's actually the way to work out if they're the right one for you or not. So let's just, you know. Okay, so that was actually, the why behind that tweet was actually very <laughs> worthwhile. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, how about this one then? So, on the uh, 20th of March, you tweeted, I just delivered a jacket potato. Snoochie, why? Because this that, makes that, no sense. That's the behaviour of A-lister Joel Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving a little bit of a side eye snooch. I actually just woke up and I really fancied jack and potato cheese and beans and I could not be bothered to just <laughs> eat one in the microwave. To walk so down the shard all the way to Sainsbury's. Shut up, man. So I ordered two jack and potato cheese and beans and I'm sorry, but that is really an underrated meal. Jack and potato <laughs> cheese and beans yeah. should be sold in Novikov, the shard as Munya keeps bringing up. <laughs> it should be an option. <laughs> I'm sick of just getting less. Well. That's it what does. I was going to say. I don't feel like that's a travelling no, meal. No, it does. It does because it's in like about three boxes from where I order it from and it's like sellotaped up as well. So trust me, it's actually all right. <laughs> sellotape? They yeah, sellotape yeah. it. And then the cheese just melts <laughs> over the beans. Like, it's actually perfect. So, sorry, best meal. One of the best meals to go down. I can't lie. Listen, to, oh, eat, to each his own. Mm. The same with a cheese and crisp sandwich. Cheese and crisp. Crisp in a sandwich mm. should be sold no, in That's a, a big shout. That sorry. is a big shout. So, yeah. um, Joel, when you're um, when you're when you're touring, as you will be this summer, <laughs> well, ha ha does your diet go down the pan, like, or are you, you sort of a master chef? No, do you know what? I just kind of like when I'm touring, I I eat a lot less, so I actually mm. like get in like really good shape because I like eating like hardly any calories. It's just like, especially when you're like going from island to island, you don't want to eat any of that airport food, bruv. Like that dodgy mm. chicken sandwich at some Greek airport, bruv. It's like, it's not happening. You don't want to like risk that, innit? So. But yeah, but I find that if you're moving around, you're going to be eating fast food a lot. I don't know what level you're at. Do you have a chef rolling around with you? Like... <laughs> not that level yet, bruv, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's just like, I think... When you're always on the move, for me anyway, like, I'll eat small with it, like a bit of fruit and coffee and that, not so much like the fast food. And mm -hmm. yeah, man. I, and then you just like kind of drink, you're drinking every night as well. So yeah, I don't know. You kind of like, I get in, a, I get in better shape when I'm uh, around touring just because literally you're eating like hardly any calories. I'm sorry, but fruit and coffee as a main meal. <laughs> that, yeah, that does sound a little bit wild. I can't lie. It sounds <laughs> horrid. Okay, m and Joel, Snoochie, thank you so much for joining us. Um, good you. luck for all the Thank awards. You. So we've got um, best single, we've got breakthrough, we've got solo, we've got arias on the table. Look, I'm hoping that the shelves are going to be packed out with awards. Hey. So got everything crossed for you. Uh, and if not, just run away shouting Portuguese. I think that's what we've all learned from yeah. today. And that is uh, the moral of the story. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, until next time, I've been Munya. I've been Sideman. And this was a Top Table podcast with Mastercard. Mm.